Hello doctors, now the topic that we will take for prosthodontics is the maxillofacial prosthodontics also known as MACFAC in many um, terms by many oral surgeons uh, this is a topic which is uh, in a combined and uh, distributed and contributed by both a uh, oral surgeon as well as a prosthodontist now oral surgeon deals with the correction of the defects and prosthodontic deals with the restoration of the defects caused by maxillofacial injuries now, maxillofacial prosthodontics, as the definition goes, is the art and science of functional or cosmetic reconstruction by the means of non-living substances that we have in those regions of maxilla, mandible, or the face that has been missing or is a defect due to some surgical intervention, pathology, trauma, or any development of congenital malformation. Now this is what a maxillofacial prosthodontia uh, deals with where there can be many defects which is caused congenitally or it can be acquired later. We all know the difference between congenital and acquired. Congenital is one that comes from birth. Acquired is one we get after the birth. So the classification of maxillofacial prosthesis or prosthodontia can be, it can be an intraoral or an extraoral. For example, an ear a ear, a nose of uh, for example it can be like an ear, a eye, a nose, a facial reconstruction, reconstruction of the neck region, can be all the fingers as well, can be of the leg toes as well, all can be done by a prosthodontics. It's a vast uh, branch in itself, maxillofacial prosthodontia. More like a plastic surgeons they do work as. So it can be intraoral, that is inside the oral cavity, that can be in the defects in the maxilla. It can be removed mandible due to any chemotherapy or cancer. Or it can be due to any tongue removal or any places which, require, which requires a replacement can be helped out with the prosthotics. It can be the maxillary and the mandibular region as well. It can be congenital or acquired as well. Now if it has to be congenital, that is from the birth, like cleft lip, cleft palate, those are the ones which are congenital from the birth, those requires or any, you know, non-formation of any part of the maxilla, like at times there is non-formation of the palate, for leading to cleft palates and other uh, deformities, so in those cases also prosthodontics can help in a maxillofacial prosthodontia. What are the treatment supplements? We can also give like radiation supplements. In those cases, the patient who are going to get the chemotherapy, what happens is the dose is more than 50 guys high. So gyri 50 is uh, above that area, what is going to happen? It can cause the teeth loss. It can cause osteonecrosis of the bone. It can also cause other defects onto the mucosa itself. So in those cases to prevent those uh, detrimental effects from the radiation therapy, a prosthodontist can make a shield, radiation shield it is called as. The patient who are getting a chemotherapy of the cheek, that can be prevented, the teeth can be prevented, the mucosa, the bone can be prevented in those areas by keeping a radiation shield after the cheek and before the teeth, intraorally. There can be radiation appliances which can be made. So what happens if we, are have, we want a radiation only to one particular section, we can cover other, all areas so that the radiation come directly to that particular section. So that is called radiation appliance. We will guide the radiation where we want it exactly to be and not on the surrounding area so that that do not get affected by the high source of radiation. Coming to the maxillary defects, what are the types of maxillary defects? It can be congenital, as I told you, cleft lip, cleft palates. Acquired, like it can be due to some accidents, trauma or pathology, total maxillectomy or partial maxillectomy can be there. Generally, we do not tell it as, you know, uh, partial maxillectomy. It's somewhere the norm is normal term according to the oral surgeon because maxilla is one particular unit. So mandible, you can say it is a hemimandibulectomy. In uh, maxilla, you do not say hemimaxillectomy, you'd rather say partial maxillectomy or total maxillectomy. Maxilla is one particular unit, joined from one bone altogether. Congenital maxillary defects like cleft palates and cleft lip. Now what is the reason behind cleft lip and cleft palate? That is the improper fusion of the pre-maxilla to that of the palatal walls. That is the reason. Now, Or the improper fusion of the frontonasal complex with that of the palatal region or the maxillary process. 
So that will create a gap, a cleft between the lips or the palate section. It can be unilateral or bilateral as well. It can be it can be congenital in unilateral area. So one section, the left side of frontonasal complex is not forming with that of the maxillary process. If it is on the both the sides, then Y-shaped cleft is created, and that is called as the bilateral cleft palates. We have views classification of cleft lip, and we do also have classification to that. So starting with the group one kind of. Uh, cleft lip what happens in that we can see the cleft is not coming on to the lip area and it is restricted to the posterior palate region whereas a group 2 when the palatal region cleft is increased to much uh, front area so that lip is still intact but the palate is divided into two sections that is uh, considered a group 2 we also said a group 3, what happens in that the cleft of one side, that is the front to nasal complex of one side is not fused with the maxillary process on one side unilaterally. So then there will be entire cleft from starting from the lip to that of the hard palate to that of the soft palate. Whereas in group 4, we have bilateral clefts, only 4 classification. So there is a bilateral cleft we can see on the lips as well as to the soft palate and the heart palate. Now what are the prosthetic considerations that you do to prevent the cleft lip and cleft palate? The surgery part is different that oral surgeons take care of. Coming to the prosthodontic uh, corrections to that is we give we can give a uh, complete coverage of the palate where it is you know stopping the, the cleft is being closed with those acrylic dentures so what will happen the phonation will be improved because phonation is all about where there is a closed area now since there is a gap the cleft between so the phonation is affected so there we are prosthodontic terms comes into picture coming to the acquired defect Armani was a person who came up with the classification again where the acquired defects was you know classified into five types six types sorry six types the first one is a class 1 where there is a midline resection we can see here in the first picture. Class 2 there is a unilateral resection which is there. So unilaterally there is a resected area. We have class 3 where there is resection in the central region only. No side of the ridge is being touched. Class 4 we have bilateral anterior posterior resection. Or not only on one side of the anteriorly also on the posterior but bilaterally. We have only posterior resection as class 5, that is only in the posterior ridges to that of the palate is resected out and class 6 is anterior resection altogether. So these are the 6 classification, let's revise it off, that is first is a midline resection, second comes as a unilateral resection only in the posterior region, third is where anterior posterior is concerned, that is the fourth one and third is where the central resection takes place. Fifth is a posterior resection only and sixth is when the anterior resection takes place. How are we going to replace all this thing? How are we going to reconstruct something? A normal denture will only reconstruct this with additional like in cast partial denture we have retention. We have to take retentions from the available natural teeth that we have and also the available palatal support that we have left over in those patients. Coming to mandibular defects, we have congenital defects of mandible, very uncommonly seen as a congenital defect but acquired, yes. What are the congenital defects can be of mandible? Some syndromes like mandibulofacial dystosis, what happens in that the clavicle gets closer like this, this is the appearance of the patient of mandibuloclacial credocranial dysplasia kind of patients where the clavicles are broken, you have a bird face kind of thing, the chests are enclosed inside and also the face appears longer and bradycephalic, brachycephalic appearance is there. Or ankylosis of temporomandibular joint is also congenital defect of mandible. Coming to the acquired defects, it can be a neoplasia, so neoplastic resection of any mandible, square muscle carcinoma of the tongue or oropharynx of the floor of the mouth. So even in the oropharynx region, the nasopharynx, there is a oral cavity and pharynx, the connection in that between that reason if there is a resection also we need to have some reconstruction prosthesis in that particular region. It can be types of acquired mandibular defects based on the amount of resection and the bone loss taken place 
extent of the bone loss of the mandibular can be further classified into two types as a continuity defect and discontinuity defect. Oral surgeons again uh, differentiate that you know based on the muscles uh, attachment and the activeness of the muscle that which should be a continuity defect which should be a discontinuity defect based on that they will decide whether to go for an open reduction or a closed reduction that is all the part of uh, oral surgeons for us a continuity defect is those defects where we are supposed to you know maintain the continuity again back discontinuity defect or Non-continuity defect is where we do not have any more continuity so we have to reconstruct something so that it is connecting both the sections which has been left over freely suspended. A oral surgeon doesn't leave it freely suspended, they will, plate, they will fix up plates and make it more stable. As a prosthodontist we are supposed to guide the oral surgeon to get it back to the occlusion it was before because their work is to just make it stable now the stability can be attained in the occlusion it can be not in the occlusion as well so we have to prepare a stent which will guide the oral surgeons to reconstruct and fix a plate on the discontinuity defect cases because continuity defect cello we have something in continuation so they will not be so much you know disturbed when they are putting up fixing up the plate but whereas the discontinuity defect it is like finding something in open sea so when you are lost in a sea you do not know where to go so we need to have a stand which will guide the oral surgeons to get it back to occlusion. We also have velopharyngeal defects and their reconstruction of what will velopharyngeal defect uh, disturb us to. Most important thing is speech, deglutition and more, how can we treat them, obturator is a treatment option for them, parietal surgery and surgical reconstruction of course. There can be extra oral defects as well. There can be defects in the, uh, as I told you earlier, as well, ear, eye, nose, there can be defects as well. So it can be due to epithelial tumors or connective tissue tumor, like you know, we have keratinocytic tumors or adrenal origin, or we have melanocytic or fibromas, for example, lymphomas in those cases. Also, we have extra oral congenital defects, like ear is missing or you know eyes are not formed, the eyes are missing or due to some uh, defects of you know uh, acquired defects like accidents you lost his eye, the nose, accident, pan facial trauma cases pan facial trauma is where you are entire, there is no only four, one, two or three there is pan facial, it's all broken all together in those cases as well our prosthodontic uh, you know plastic reconstruction is comes into picture so auricular defect it can be micro that can be a microtia like small ear we can associate it with atresia of the external auditory meatus you can have anosia no ear at all smaller ear defects or nasal defects for example defect arising due to surgery known as rhinotomy defects you know those are called whichever is related to nose is called rhinotomy so anything where the nose is not formed or you know reconstruction so this is all taken over because of your resection of the nose of unilateral or bilateral nose is resected one ear is lost or you know eye auricular or defect is there so reconstruction of all those things are also under the terms of prosthodontics that is maxillofacial prosthodontics max fax prosthodontics let's see some of the cases how we are going to reconstruct all these things so that the idea gets more viewed wider and clear there is a case of a patient who had a missing left ear and we can see there is no left ear to the patient and this was a congenital defect. The patient did not have ear from its birth. With the age of 15 when he appeared to us, we made an impression. This is how you are supposed to make an impression and put a wax, alginate impression was made. We put the cast, certain markings are done from to understand how is the distance from where and those markings is a wax ear which is fabricated and we try it in the patient mouth and then there is a silicon that is a RTV room temperature vulcanized we have silicon we have different materials for maxillofacial it can be acrylic it can be silicon so this is an example of RTV that is room temperature vulcanized silicon that uh, medical grade silicon which is used there are two grades of silicon one industrial grade one is medical grade this is a medical grade silicon used with different stains and color of the patient we there are different aids to you know 
uh, how we are going to attach it it can be due by magnets it can be due to or by uh, specs it can be it can be various methods of retentive aids in maxillofacial also earlier time they used tapes there can be use of fixons and this is how we have uh, given the patient a beautiful ear with the help of his uh, um, specs which was removable with no power of course because the patient had no power in him so it was a uh, zero power flare specs and we had given the ear along with that ocular defects can be there or uh, that ocular defects containing it can be only the eye which is missing or the entire area of the eye which is missing or due to accident lost like in cases of this patient he she had lost her left eye totally on in an accident so what happened is you can see the peri ocular area which is drifted inside and also the inside area where the eye was resected out or that particular area the eye bed area which was resected out it's all reddish appearance the good part for us was this patient's vascular supply hadn't been dead as of now so we can see some reddish area you make an alginate impression make the primary cast out of alginate impression and then make for the final impression you need what you need a custom tray so this is like a custom tray for the eye or ocular prosthesis that was prepared and a monophase impression was made of the eye bed applying glycerin and other lubricating agents as well as some eye drops so that the patient doesn't get irritated with the material that we are using though it is a biocompatible material monophase in itself then we will prepare the final master cast with the notches so that it gets and fits into will make the wax pattern and the acrylize the eye and place in the patient's eye bed this is how ocular process is fabricated coming to obturators obturators are the one where the maxillary defects have been taken place so what happens in those cases that if it is a congenital it is like a cleft but if it is an acquired what happens due to cancer the entire area is resected <coughs> so when the entire area of the maxillary that uh, palate is resected the patient's speech is affected patient's mental status is affected altogether patient any cancer patient is not stable patient they need our care they need the confidence of the doctor and once they do have those they are themselves motivated those patients who fight back cancer and come down for reconstruction are the patients who have self motivation power a lot so in those patients the most important thing is that they want to speak the speech can be obtained when we close that area so anything that closes that defect is called obturator we'll see the case of obturator and sometimes so there are different types of obturator one is called surgical obturator that is immediately when the surgery is happening that time obturator is given delayed obturator just after a week we have interim obturator after within 6 months of time we have a final obturator or definitive obturator prosthesis which is given at the end of 6 months after the end of 6 months that is when the patient is used to and now all the radiation effects have been lost <coughs> and the patient is now all ready to be using and speaking of and back to the social social life of the patient in those cases we will be using definitive obturator now this was a patient who had fight back cancer 7 months before and this was resected this area was resected out and so what happened is the entire area of the palate on the right hand side of the patient was resected so the teeth in that area was also lost so obviously the mastication was into big question as well as the speaking capability till the patient came to us and explain what he wanted was all what he was writing it down in a paper he used to carry a diary where he used to write on so that is like a social embarrassment for the patient itself so he wanted to get his uh, teeth back so that mastication was proper and his health was also hampered a lot he has lost anyways after chemotherapy people do lose weight but then this patient had drastically lost weight due to his loss of teeth in that particular region So this is a basket technique of fabrication of an obturator where we fabricate obturator like a basket there is another technique called lost wax technique or lost salt technique what we do in that is in this area where we can see there is a wax area which is left open 
here this is the basket technique so we have left it open in case this would have been a lost salt technique so we would have added salt and sugar solution your salt and sugar into that particular area and later on when the obturator is fabricated you will make a hole over there place water so that the salt and sugar gets dissolved and comes out so we have a hollow area in that because what is the main requirement of an obturator that one is that it should have retention it should get into that defect number one number two it should be light weighted because maxillary against the gravity so it will be coming down at times so to prevent that what is required requirement is the hollow obturator also these obturators are called hollow bulb obturators so another important thing the patient's requirement this patient's requirement was since due to his cast he wanted a white denture so we created that in a tooth colored acrylic denture for the patient and this is how we will block the area see this is the defect and we block the defect with the help of our obturator give a nice teeth on the right hand side so that the patient can chew with direct retention and clasp on the molar as well as on the central incisor i also thought of engaging one molar with acrylic so that that will give like you know cusil denture like it is basketing gasket effect is there on one of the teeth and there's a patient with lovely smile after his reconstruction with the obturator splints is another thing on which comes under maxillofacial prosthesis now the splint can be given in those cases who the patients are suffering from congenital or acquired temporomandibular disorders which is further corrected now those temporomandibular disorder which requires a oral surgeon's help are not into the consideration of splints but those cases whose temporomandibular disorder is because of some muscular instability or it is also called as orthodontically stable position osp is not obtained when the muscles in those region of the temporomandibular joint the mastication muscles are not giving proper tonicity is very active or there might be some other disturbances so that the tonicity of the muscles are lost or tonicity is increased is become active so what happens a constant pull to the temporomandibular joint and it is hitting to the particular uh, glenoid fossa so hence it is giving crepitus or you know clicking sound in those patients so to avoid all those things and constant pain what we are supposed to do we are supposed to disengage the cavity that the glenoid fossa from the temporomandibular joint so what will disengage it when there is space between the occlusion the teeth space will be there the teeth will come down and disengage this so how will we do that we'll give splints so now the splints can be of two types it can be stabilization splint or repositioning splint stabilization splint is given to those patients where there is no surgery question there was no surgery into question those patients who needs for stabilization like for example those where clicking is there crepitus is there muscle factor is a pathology of the temporomandibular disorder in those cases stabilization splint repositioning splint anterior repositioning splint are given to those patients where surgery has been taken place ankylosis or any other surgery so repositioning it back to that you know orthodontically stable position os position or the centric relation position we need to give those kind of splints now this is a splint and again further a splint can be made up of hard acrylic that's called hard splint and certain splints can be made up of soft material that is our thermoplastic sheets now those are different schools of thought and dawson made a study in the year of 1989 saying that no hard splints are always better than soft splint because the soft splint what happened the patient tends to chew more so the activity of the muscle grows more and tonicity is increased and hence the problem is not solved but yes hard splint has another disadvantage it was very hard so at times biting was difficult placement was difficult with the patients but yes when you are preparing a hard splint for the patients the most important thing is we have and we already have done the eccentric motions and marked out which all should be left free where we should be giving working end contacts non working end contact and equal contacts onto the split whereas the soft splint is not that heavy that it can create much of disintegration or disocclusion in the area types of occlusal appliances is what we told for the treatment of tmd it can be stabilization appliance or it can be anterior positioning appliances 
Now anterior positioning appliance can also be used like for example we have something called Lucia jig in the market. Now that is used in the anterior region. Now why is that used? So that deprogramming of the muscles are taking place. So what will happen? The proprioceptive response that the patient have got developed in years together to get the muscle into that particular place has been lost. So to lose that proprioception, we have to deprogram the muscle. The engram of the muscle has to be broken. So for that we use anterior positioning spin like for example Lucia Jing only placed in this particular region anteriorly so that the posterior disengages and the muscle forgets its home. That is the engram is lost. The proprioceptive engram is lost. So there is where to use anterior repositioning splint. This patient who was suffering from temporomandibular disorder and due to the muscle origin when examined and finally diagnosed, we planned to give a heart splint and the patient was doing fine after 21 days with no pain because the muscles were taken out from its stabilized position, unstable position rather and given a new proprioceptive engram to function. This is a patient with a soft splint. There is like a thermoplastic sheet which is being used. In those cases where we use thermoplastic sheet can be also used as sports guard. It can be used as a night guard for snoring cases. Also thermoplastic sheets can be used for preparing a soft splint. Coming to mandibular guidance therapy. Now a patient, those who have been reconstructed and now resection of a mandible has happened already. Think for example, the entire temporomandibular ramus area has been lost. Now that particular, this much area, when the, when the oral surgeon is grafting it, it is fine. If the oral surgeon is not grafting it out and only putting up plates, now what happens in those cases, the patient forgets the centric occlusion and centric relation position because the mandible cannot be guided to that particular position back. The mandible goes somewhere here, somewhere there. So our aim as a prosthodontist should be that we need to guide that particular mandible to that particular area. What can guide? Something which will not allow the teeth to come this side. Now when the mandible is coming up, if it goes like this, something which will hinder it like this and then it will go up and come in the position. Earlier when the teeth is like this, if the teeth, if the mandible goes and comes here, occlusion it is not doing, it is going here. So if something stops the mandible to go this way, something like this, will stop to go more that side, it will take it to the position where occlusion is required. So that is called guidance. We are guiding the mandible to the position of the occlusion that we want. So like for example, see this case which was resected on his left side. After resection when the patient came, there was total deviation of the mandible. So the mandible he wasn't able to get into occlusion at all. So we guided the mandible, see how we guided the mandible, we can see a metal plate towards the particular area that we want the mandible to move on and not go beyond that area. So that is how a guidance mandibular guidance therapy or you know reconstruction is done and also with several class, we have given eye class when it is indicated in a maxillofacial prosthodontic cast partial dentures or any dentures to use a metal clasp and direct vitreous as much as possible in a reversible fashion. That is, one on one reciprocal arm on buccal, then the next tooth will have reciprocal arm on lingual. The next teeth will have reciprocal arm on buccal. So it's a criss-cross pattern of preparation of a direct retainer to gain more reciprocation, more stabilization and more retention of the prosthesis that we are providing along with the guide plane that we have made for like this patient. Thank you.